Welcome back to Empires of the Undergrowth. According to my notes, the last time we played this game was February. That's like four months ago. <laughs> now there's a new level and the developers have said that this is going to require an expert understanding of the game to beat. So we've got quite the challenge. So it's gonna be under extra levels and it's called Cramped. Oh my God. A leaf cutter level where underground space is at a premium and both the nest and the surface are heavily infested with powerful enemies. Ooh, we have taunt majors. Oh my God, yeah, they were not joking. Okay, so I'm thinking what we need to do is first clear out a main tunnel here. And then also once we have a few workers, we're gonna go in here and kill this thing, whatever it is, cause this is where we're gonna dump our waste. Now what we gotta do is wait for their larva to grow and look, this is one of the coolest processes in the game is like the animations and like how they all just like pop out and they're like, hey, we're ready to fight. Well, we're gonna need it. So I'm gonna get all 13 of these ants and we're gonna go in here. And whatever's in there, we've gotta kill it. If we don't kill this guy, I mean, honestly, we're screwed. See, even the narrator knows it. The ants. They must fight. Why? Because that guy is looking like he's gonna eat us a little bit. Okay, so these six, we lost only one, so that's pretty good. So basically what we wanna do here, we wanna clear all that out as well, is now we have access to the surface because look at all of these juicy, juicy leaves. But real quick, this video is sponsored by Prosperous Universe. Prosperous Universe is one of the most ambitious games I've seen in quite some time. In Prosperous Universe, you're the CEO of your own space faring company, just like every other player in this massively multiplayer economy sandbox simulation. Now you all know I love a good military battle and there's games for that. Prosperous Universe, by contrast, is all about the economy and complex player-driven supply chains in which every material has to either be produced or purchased from other player-run companies. In Prosperous Universe, instead of NPCs and scripted events shaping the course of history, your entire experience is driven purely by player decisions, which is pretty exciting. Meaning that every time you step into Prosperous Universe, there will be unique challenges that will take real brain juice to succeed as forging huge alliances, building lasting empires, and waging trade wars will be key to victory. This game is all about realism and fairness. There's no grind, there's no pay to win. So make sure you check out the link in the description. Now back to the action. All right, control group one, get out there. Control group two, we need to have food dropping in. So we'll put that near the entrance. You do not have food to build that tile. Wow. And then this is where we're gonna put all the waste. What do you, it, I, it says I don't have enough food, but it literally says, oh, it's five. Okay. Never mind. And this is awesome. Talk about animations like leaf cutter ants. Whoa, whoa, where'd you go? He just dropped his leaf. The leaf stores are full. Oh, okay. I knew that. And then they dropped them here. It's been a while. You do not have food to build that. Guys, I have enough food. Why are they lying? Why are you embarrassing me in front of my friends? And leaf cutter ants have this very complex economy. Basically, you bring the leaves in, then they drop the leaves on the tiles, like where you're growing stuff. And I guess it's kind of a, a form of food. And then there's these little dudes that run and take the refuse, AKA leaf poopy, and they drop it over in the leaf poopy hexagons. And if you walk normal ants over there, they get like poisoned. They don't like it. They don't, no one likes leaf poop. All right, so, and then our leaves actually aren't our true food. This is our food. It's formed from the rotting leaves. It's pretty crazy, actually. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build more workers so that we can recruit more workers. <laughs> and with that, we'll produce more food and then we'll get more workers and soldiers. And then hopefully we will conquer the undergrowth, or I guess this is the subterranean realm. And then this is the undergrowth realm. Where's the quantum realm? And if you guys are watching Loki, I have a theory that that city, I can't say it here, right? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll put it on Twitter. I don't know. Cause we can't have spoilers, right? Spoilers are no fun. No one likes spoilers, but it is a theory, but it's based off things. You, you just gotta watch it. All right. So our army is going, Oh, that's why we're, we have the wrong group going out to get more food. We'll rearrange that. So that way we've got seven uh, basically protecting the queen and, and kind of doing all the, you know, subterranean jobs. And then these guys are gonna go out and get that food. Now there's a lot of stuff, but I, I don't think 
we are going to be attacked or anything like that. Look at that. Our refuse is pretty high, so we're gonna wanna change that up. Now, this is the interesting thing. The big guys have to go build it, but if they were to walk over it, they would get sort of poisoned or sick, AKA nobody likes leaf poop, okay? All right, I think that's pretty good for our economy right now. And what we'll have to do is kill- This is probably gonna be a bunch of ants. Small red exclamation points, well, they're gonna be less of a threat than, say, these four giant exclamation points. They're gonna be smaller bugs. So we have to find the least threatening area, which is probably here. And then we're gonna want soldiers for that. So I could start working on soldiers, say, maybe like a group of soldiers here. They're pretty expensive, though. Leafcutter medias, the medium-sized ones, are 80. 80 food. Yeah, see, this is what it looks like. The plague. The plague of the ants. Man, it has been a while since we played this game. It is such a joy to hop back into a game that you loved and that you haven't played in a while, but has also gotten an update. So there's like this fresh take on that thing that you used to love that you just haven't had in a while. And that's how I feel with this game. Oh, look at this. We've got a little, got a little area up here I could probably put big guys in. Yeah, basically one of the key mechanics we're gonna have to use in this is the upgrade mechanic. Which basically, like, this is where the waste pile, like, look at that. We have 105 out of 140. We could increase the capacity to hold waste. And also increase, like, the skill of our soldiers by upgrading their tiles as well. But there's this weird, like, if you play Civilization VI, you're gonna love hexagons, right? But you're also aware of, like, adjacency. That's kind of like... See these little plus ones? Basically, it's trying to encourage you to sort of build your nest how ants actually would, you know, in like little pods. It's pretty interesting mechanic. Like that was very well thought out. All right, we're gonna have these guys. Now, these guys are a little bit bigger than the workers. There we go, see? They're like, hello boss. I don't know why we's British ants, but we's gonna go get big leaves. So the little ants get little leaves. Medium ants get medium leaves, and you guessed it, big boy ants get big boy leaves. I'm thinking now that we've got these soldiers at play, we'll get like maybe... We should start working on maybe another uh, worker batch is what I'm thinking. Numbers. Quantity has equality all its own, my friends. Yeah, but basically since we can't build up here, we can't expand our nest up here, we can only expand it underground. That's the whole issue of this map. This challenge is, uh, well, you know, quite frankly, space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of Baron's Ant Empire. They will join us or die. We got Death Star. I wonder what an ant Death Star would look like. <laughs> I mean, what would it be? A magnifying glass, I guess? Get them, boys! Go in there and kill them. Now, I can hold alt and I can see their health bars, which is nice. But basically, if you're not familiar, if this is the first time you've ever seen it, you're like, what's that green smoke? That's what you call pheromones. Now, we're kind of doing good, so I'm gonna push my luck here and also clear out this area. Because this probably holds back all of that, right? Yeah. I don't know what's here, but it's big, whatever it is. We're running out of leaves. We've converted them all to food. Now, what's interesting is when an ant dies, uh, basically, look at this tile. So see how it's 20 food to place and 2 to hatch? So basically, you place the tile, but then it needs 2 more food to hatch, but when an ant dies, it only requires 2 more food to get that ant back. Which is kind of cool. Alright, these are probably what? Ants? These are little ants. These are little ants. And we's gonna kill them all. We's clearing the land! Carpe the diem, carpe the ground. Well, these guys look like they got red heads. Is it a trick? Is it merely a trick of the light? What quote is that game from? And why is it so brutally hard and also so rewarding at the same time? Success so clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? All right. Now, normal ants would be able to eat these things and use them as uh, sustenance food. But unfortunately, oh, look at that. There's like a little, little cicada looking things maybe. But leafcutter ants only eat leaves. They are vegetarian, man. I want to save up for, like, maybe one major ant. He'll taunt them and attract the attention of whatever it is that we're going to be fighting, and then the little guys just go in and start biting at their legs. Now, the next question is, where can we... Oh, we got to kill these guys. All right, we can do that. But first, we will acquire sustenance. And I think we're going to need to upgrade our food. We can also make fast tiles. And that will actually count once they're built, so it'll actually allow us to upgrade these. 
using the synergy that I was talking about through adjacency. Man, if you guys play Civilization VI, I, I, I think it was like 2019 and 2020 I discovered that game and I just binged it. Lately I've been on a, a total war kick. I'm very excited for Warhammer 3. All right, how are we looking? Pretty good. Expanded pretty well. Now that we have a lot of food, I'm thinking we will get one big boy and then we'll charge through here once he's up and running. So here's what I'm talking about. They plant it, they plant it. Uh, they put down the larva. This is gonna be a big larva because it's a big ant. Oh my God, it's huge. Wow, it was bigger than I thought it would be. Like compare that to a worker's larva and then big boy comes out. He's like, I'm the AT80 AT walker of ants. And that's pretty much what he is. Oh, it's a, it's, it's the Starship Troopers bug. There's apparently a Starship Troopers game on Steam that I've seen made by uh, a developer or a publisher I really, really enjoy, Slytherine. They make a lot of cool indie strategy games. All right, so that worked out. Now what we wanna do is have them not pick up food. Actually, no, you can pick up food. There's, there's a little bit of food left. There's a hundred food left up here. So we'll go up. There's nothing else for them to do. We'll go up here. And what's cool is sometimes the big guy will go up there if there's enough. All right, we've got enough food to get another big guy. So to replace him, it actually costs 15 food. So that's one of the other things in this game is you want to run a reserve of food because you're going to need it. Wow, there's literally like, look at this. There's one food under my little pheromone marker here. <laughs> that's literally how much plant resources are there. These guys are getting cheeky. We got some grasshoppers. There's all different kinds of bugs. Most notably, this big boy here, the bull whip spider. I think it's a bull whip spider, right? I don't know my, my bugs. All right, now we send the pheromone marker over here. The army marches forth. Look at this, man. Two big ones, some medium ones, bunch of small workers. The battle, that was a skirmish, friend. We're gonna have battles all day. We may be leaf cutter ants, but most assuredly, this isn't army of ants. Excuse me, big guy, where are you going? You're supposed to be up here literally tanking the damage, taunting them. You're like, oh, I was scared, you know? Ants aren't supposed to be scared. Yeah, you don't think like ants have fear, do you? All right, now, here we go. Now the big guys go up and that's always cool to see like all three sizes of leaf cutter ants come down with just like all of this resource. So we're at zero out of 230 leaf storage. Let's see when the whole convoy comes back and they will. The ants go marching one by one to make me rich. Hurrah. Let's see how much we got. I was expecting more, but I guess more is gonna be incoming. And then the leaves then be, are, are converted, right? So you gotta remember that. It was a lot. It sure felt like a lot. And that will allow us to increase our army size. So let's see, who are we gonna be fighting next? Another Starship Troopers bug, another of those guys. We got some grasshoppers over here. There's no ramp to these grasshoppers, right? All right, I think it might be time to just clear out the undergrowth. The subterranean realm. And I wanna convert this into all workers. All right, whatever comes out there, we've got to defeat it. Here we go, boys. We're opening up the gates of Hades. Oh my God, that was a bad idea. We're gonna lose a ton of ants here, but luckily we have food reserves. These things will be just clawing through us. We need to get a pincer maneuver and use our pincers via the pincer maneuver. So we get more pincers in them while we're pincering them in our pincer maneuver. My God, war of attrition here. That actually may have been a bad idea. I think we'll we'll pull this one off, but it's gonna be close. That way if I do that, what, they're gonna come both ways, right? Yeah, that was rough. Okay, actually, protect the queen, cause big guy's here. If the queen dies, we lose. That should be no surprise. Oh, the big guys are holding those gates, making the honorable sacrifice to protect the queen. Very good, very good. Stop hurting my queen. All right, we did it. Okay, so that's got a little bit more threats than I would have uh, maybe liked to admit. So then what we need to do is immediately go back to a foraging party here. And I think maybe right here is good. Actually, we'll go back down. Okay. Well, that wasn't scary at all, was it? I think the issue is we need a lot more medium-sized soldiers. Workers aren't really good fighters. I wish, do we have the stats? Not really. Like their fighting stats, like how much attack damage you do. And unfortunately, the leaves, even though leaves you think are a sustainable resource, they don't grow back in a time frame to where we can really take advantage of that, unfortunately. So now it's just time to get rich. 
off of fat, juicy green leaves. Just like humans, ants, leafcutter ants in particular, just chasing that green. Ha! <laughs> Big guys with their leaves. I love it. This game is gorgeous. It'd be cool if you could make, you know, use inverse kinematics and actually have like physics for the ants and have like a bug or an evolution, like a bug evolution battle simulator where you have to evolve your bugs. Oh man, just let me develop games. All right, I'm gonna start working on another group of workers over here. All right, we're gonna gather our army over here. They've been instructed not to collect leaf resources, only to go out and fight and die, if need be, for their queen. One of my big guys is a little bit weak. Grasshoppers are very, very strong. Like, look at that. Oh my god, they just destroyed everything I sent. My god. All right, second attack. Oh my god, this leaf is worth 615 food. Oh, that is gonna be so good once we take that. All right, here it is. Now, you may get the food. Look at that, oh my god, we are gonna get rich. Rich in chlorophyll-based plants. But yeah, I remember watching like those National Geographic shows and like planet Earth and just seeing like ants marching with leaves and just finding it so fascinating. All right, so right now what I did was I rearranged things. So our workers, there's 43 of them. They're all going to this just absolute mother load of resources. And then I'm gathering the soldiers here because there's only one bug, a Starship Troopers beetle, as I like to call them, just chilling over here. So this is our next resource. That's a really nice little thing when you Hover over it, you, everything becomes transparent. You can see through the undergrowth. Very nice feature. Allowing us to get pictures of this big boy. This leaf is worth 1,230 resources. All right, let's go get them. So this should be a relatively easy takeover. Now I'm thinking we get another big guy. We're gonna want more mediums. We're actually running out of room for mediums. So we'll probably have to fight whatever's in here and increase our medium ants production area into it. All right, everybody's here. Let's go. Let's open it up. Oh my god. Okay. We'll probably want workers too. We'll actually want to hit them from that side as well. Look, now we're coming at them from both sides. Oh, I guess we didn't probably need that. Oh, look at that. That was that was nice. Okay. You know, one thing this game could have used is a fast forward button. Look at how much food we have. I mean, uh, amount of available fungus. Yeah. Because the food deteriorates and turns into fungus. But then there's like... This maximum cap? It's weird. It's a very interesting economy. So the question is, do you think whatever's in here is really dangerous? Like, in theory, it could be one of these guys. If it is, we're doomed. So I think just to be on the safe side, we're gonna call everybody back. And we're gonna open it. What's behind door number this one? Oh god, okay. It could be worse. Yeah, and actually, I'm feeling pretty confident about that, so we will reroute our soldiers- I mean, our workers. Oh yeah, we got that. That's a- that's a lot of them, though. And they are confusing us by spitting their, like, acid. But I think while that's happening, I'm gonna upgrade our big boy soldiers. And I'm gonna increase the size of our medium soldiers. That guy's still fighting. He's still- The man <laughs> wants to die. Uh-oh, we're running out of food. Three food left. Next conquer. So, 54 enemy insects are left here. <laughs> Easy. Should we go on to the next one, these two guys? Probably, because that opens up a huge bit of resources. Oh, they're holding the ramp, though. We can't really flank them. And unfortunately, we don't have the spitters. There's ants that are capable of spitting themselves. Look at these two ugly little spiders. You know what? We're gonna kill them. Defeat them! Now we have all the food we could ever dream of. They try to escape you though, which is kind of cool. Like, when they'll stun you and then just like try to run away. But this one, it looks like we've got him pinned in a corner. However, he's got big legs, so he can technically just walk over us, right? But can you imagine like an actual working spider in a battle simulator? Like an Arachnorok spider from like, uh, Warhammer Total War? Oh god, where are you running, dude? Give up! I don't know which one to go for. All these confusing pheromones, the answer like, bro, what is- what is happening? Our boss? This poor medium's like, you know what, I'm gonna take this guy one-on-one. -on -one. He's doing okay until he gets stunned. Alright, and there's two- well, three giant grasshoppers. I think we're gonna take this opportunity to just gather a bunch of food for a while. Actually, no. I'm gonna clear out some more of this nest. Yes, that is the plan. But they will be bringing resources back. This is what I'm talking about. Alright, whatever it is. We'll deal with it. 
Oh my god, it's a ton of grasshoppers. Jeez, this is gonna be bad. Never mind, maybe not so bad. Let's continue upgrading our big guys when and where we can. And now that we've unlocked all that, I can expand my army. All right, whatever this is, it's gonna hurt, but we're gonna fight it. There's four giant things. Four even bigger grasshoppers. Cool. Very cool. But I think as we've increased the size of our medium warrior army, we've been winning our skirmishes much, much quicker and easier. All right. I feel like we've kind of just hit critical mass here. Like, you, you know those, uh, I, was it planet Earth where, like, there were monkeys and just every living thing was running in this rainforest because, like, there were ants on the move. Oh my god, that is a giant grasshopper. But we're winning. I would just love to see an insectoid battle simulator. It would be very, very cool, especially if you could have, like, physics-based animations in combat, which is hard to do. Like, let, you know? All right, how are we doing in here? The only thing left is this group over here. You know what? We're going to exterminate it just to see what it is. Curiosity may kill the cat. We do not have enough food. Oh, we can't do that yet until we get more food. All right, fine. We'll clear out this area to get some quick and easy food. So what? Four small to medium sized grasshoppers? Easy. Easy. <laughs> I wish I could chat that like it's a game of Rocket League and I'm that guy who's just intolerable and nobody wants to play on his team because when everyone says GG, he says easy at the end of the game. Oh, you hate him. All right, we definitely need to do some massive upgrades to things. We need to put these guys around working to help out. We're just, we just have too many jobs, I think. I need to upgrade my leaf stores. I need to upgrade basically my entire economy. So what do we have? How much of the available space is occupied by, occupied by dead fungus? That's the issue, right? Running out of a dead fungus storage area. Oh, I just realized there's a praying mantis hiding up here. Let's go kill it. A lot of resources. I feel like I have played the overworld level, but the underground level is different this time around. Oh, oh, oh. oh there's baby manti we totally missed. Oh man, and the praying mantis, I think when he eats you, he regains bit of his health. So he's kind of hard to kill at first, and then you get past it and he, he, he dead. He is in fact dead. Wow, these guys make quick work of stuff. Now it's time to unearth whatever's here. All right, the whole gang's here. <laughs> leaf stores are full. Okay, let's let's fight. So uh, the leafs. Oh, just grasshoppers. Oh, I thought these guys would be like something big and nasty. You know what we're gonna do in here? Big guys. Big guys only. They're the coolest ones anyway. You know. All right, we're almost there. All right, one giant grasshopper. Well, I guess three. But we're gonna try to isolate them. Whatever. Charge. <laughs> now we have access to 1,230. Yeah, so how does one get rid of dead fungus, right? I think it might just need more time. Because in a moment, once I put down this big ant area, or the big ant tile, like, we will have filled up every tile that we had in the limited available space that we had. So there it is. <laughs> I mean, how much can we actually, like, we have... 2,560 dead fungus stuff. I mean, there's a lot of dead fungus there, guys. I guess what we could do is just get everybody in on this attack. You know, I, we should have enough ants to kill this thing. If you were him, you would be absolutely terrified of the sheer number of enemies you'd be facing. Plus, we have 44 plus 56, so 100. Oh, and then these guys. Actually, yeah, we got to bring these big tanks out here. There were five tanks just chilling like, yeah, you know what, man? So that gives us 10 of the biggest ants we can get. That is huge. 50 mediums, 10 giant ones, and then the rest are workers. That has to be enough. All right, so we'll wait till all of the big guy reinforcements get there. Some of them are poisoned and a little bit weak. It takes a long time for them to walk over here. Where's that fast forward button anyway? Yeah, and there's a very narrow ramp. That's what I'm worried about. All right, boys, it's now or never. Big guy's up first, and then we'll have control group two ready. Now, he's got a bunch of little bodyguards. So, everybody up. And luckily, they can bunch up on each other. That is just massive. Oh, yeah, we got him. He can, like, basically one-shot whatever he wants. Maybe even group-shot a lot of things. But that's a victory, everybody. Thank you for watching another episode of Empires of the Undergrowth. Let me know if you do want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. Victory! For the ants, anyway. I'm not an ant.